I've, I've got about nine items. I, I, I kind of listed what I thought was still relevant and give you a recap of sort of the significant events that might inform future uh, campaigns, at least at statewide level. Uh, assuming there will be any, um, given the top two. Uh, the first was Treasurer. Um, early in the campaign, you know, I decided to do this two years ago. So two years ago, I secured a Treasurer who then uh, disappeared. Paul, Paul Sweeney, uh, he's an old friend of mine from high school. Um, I, to this day, don't know where he is, um, but he was the initial campaign treasurer. Uh, that was two years ago. So that's an event, that's a thing, you know, figure out who your treasurer is going to be, because uh, then I, I had to be the treasurer. Um, then for campaign manager, um, we flew uh, Asher Platts out for an interim uh, position just on a trial basis uh, mainly because uh, you know we were committed to Asher Platts but uh, he has so many obligations in Maine you know nationwide really he was trying to juggle his obligation his responsibilities in Maine and so he came out for three weeks and he was the initial uh, campaign manager and then he figured out he didn't really want to be a campaign manager that his skill set was better geared towards uh, obviously content uh, generation and uh, and running for office and, and running uh, a state party uh, but not in California <laughs> so and he also didn't really particularly care for California but that you know okay and then uh, communications liaison or press secretary uh, my interim person I, I contracted with uh, Miss Ann Garrison and she did a fine job for about a month or so she had some issues with the state party leadership and, and that was creating friction in the messaging that wasn't um, helpful. Um, and so, so I, I terminated, I didn't terminate that relationship, but um, I, I neglected the relationship. So, so she was on board for about a month and was able to generate some initial press uh, coverage, uh, thankfully. You know, I think she was a good choice for that position. There was some unfortunate uh, discord uh, dissidents in that, uh, you know, there was some negativity towards the state party um, in the messaging that wasn't intentional on my part. So, so that's what happened with the communications liaison. And then three, um, the Sacramento Press uh, Club uh, neglected, sorry, neglected to invite uh, several of the candidates to a luncheon event that they uh, took it upon themselves to sponsor. And they accidentally or intentionally violated federal regulations because there's, re there's federal regulations regarding how um, nonprofit organizations, certain nonprofit organizations conduct themselves when they start meddling in elections. So basically they can't use uh, biased uh, criteria, which Sacramento Press Club seems to have used no criteria other than uh, We'll pick the guy. Well, they used some criteria, but they didn't admit it. They picked the four guys with the most money. So um, that's what happened. Uh, then I hired a uh, an attorney uh, to respond to that situation, and uh, he did that, and that went pretty well, and that generated some press. Um, and then Sacramento Press Club leadership, uh, an AP reporter, she and her shills, they decided to painted as if I was a really rude person and uh, did, was, un, was morally unworthy of attending the luncheon. Um, so I bought a ticket to the luncheon and attended anyway and got some press. Uh, the most favorable press was from Fox News, uh, you know, because they're a Republican. Okay, then the Brad blog, um, he's a, you probably know about the Brad blog, he's a um, quote-unquote green uh, blogger. He, he's kind of good and bad. Um, the bad part is he bashes pretty much all the candidates. Apparently there's no candidate worthy of office, uh, including even Greens. Um, so uh, I got some good press out of uh, Mr. Friedman and some bad press out of uh, Brad. So unfortunately, the bad press came towards the end. So, uh, you know, I think it may have cost me some votes towards the end because, you know, people that support the blogosphere people um, you know, I don't know. It's mixed, mixed, mixed message. So he accused me of defamation, and I tried to share with him the, the definition of defamation. Um, and the thing is, uh, everything I posted was accurate and true. So it, it, 
it can't be defamation. And, and defamation is really hard to prove in court. So, um, you know, my attorney, uh, we have a case for defamation, unfortunately, against Mr. Friedman, but it's so difficult to pursue. You know, it's not, frankly, it's not worth budgeting $10,000 just to file a defamation case against a blogger. So I'm just trying to avoid him at this point. And then uh, campaign finance, uh, if any Green or any, any nonpartisan candidate, any, any third party candidate um, wants to run at statewide level, uh, you know, I've been saying this for two years now and it's still pretty accurate. Uh, you need about $100,000 to be viable uh, for two reasons. One is if you file, if a candidate files financial statements a year or two before their um, election, the mainstream media will take them very seriously. And that, that's the missing ingredient. If, if, if the Greens have a goal of electing somebody at statewide level uh, or any level, um, that, that candidate ideally would file a financial statement um, some number of months or even a year or two, depending on the office, in advance of that campaign that says, you know, I'm Joe Blow, I have X dollars. And the X dollars generally is six figures. Um, and, and then what that does is your name appears on the corporate polling. Uh, in absence of that, you're never going to get anywhere. Uh, you'll get no traction in the media. Um, uh, okay, so campaign finance. Uh, so I was hoping to have, I was expecting to have about $100,000 to work with. Two years ago, I told the media I had that. And so that's why I was getting, that's in part why I was getting some play in the media. My, my partner, Marty Glickman, uh, has been advising me for two years plus, really since 2010. And although she became distracted with a couple of local goals, she just helped uh, elect a supervisor who's unfortunately a reluctant Democrat. Uh, but so we just swapped out our supervisor, or well, I didn't, but Marnie did. So that became a distraction, really, and then she was helping out with Billy Talon's work, uh, Rev. And Billy, and a bunch of other stuff. So anyway, she was partially distracted. But I, in the initial um, budgeting for the campaign, I had her sporadic anyway, so it wasn't it wasn't unanticipated. Um, okay, phone list. I got a phone list from California from the Secretary of State of all the supposed registered Greens. Uh, it's a hundred over a hundred thousand people. And I've been calling that list for uh, over a year, and we've had about a 2.5% success rate with that list, meaning a, a breathing, contactable, green planning to vote. So out of the 100,000 people plus, uh, my success rate was 2.5. Some of my other callers uh, experienced as high a success rate as 4.5. It, what's funny is I, I am currently getting 3% of the vote, which is right between 2.5 and 4.5, so, so that's consistent. Um, okay, number eight, uh, website is going to be an ongoing expense, uh, my nation builder. So even though the campaign has uh, tied it down, I'm going to maintain the nation builder presence and the website uh, for Google search results. Uh, that's one thing I wasn't able to do during my governor campaign. Uh, what happened with the governor campaign is a shill for the MIC uh, did my website uh, design and so she uh, shut down my website after the campaign was over. Um, she was a shill for the military basically. Um, but this was the only paper, um, this paper covered my campaign um, and in Nevada uh, that they've the MIC put that paper out of business, so City Life's no longer in business, and they're not maintaining their archives. So that was the only independent newspaper in Nevada. Um, reporting requirements. Um, I've got ongoing because I'm going to maintain the website presence and the Nation Builder. Uh, I'm going to leave my campaign account open for a bit, and so I'm going to have report. I'm going to have. Uh, like quarterly or tri semester um, reporting requirements, with you know it's just a given the four sixties, and that's all I've got. Um, it, I'd love to take some questions. My question to you is that uh, at the beginning of the campaign.
mean if you had to answer a question from the press or from a field institute or some of the press clubs about why you should be included in the debates, your argument would be one. And then two, is there a larger public policy um, threshold or standard that you would recommend about debate inclusion in statewide races given your experience? Over. Yes, um, thank you for the question. I've been making that recommendation since 2008. And the recommendation is that um, the all of the balloted candidates uh, sh should be in the debate, um, all of them. And right now there's a federal regulation. So when a nonprofit takes it upon themselves to sponsor a political debate, they are obligated by federal regulations to include all the candidates. So there's already a federal regulation. Um, what I've asked uh, Deborah Bowen repeatedly is if she would take the initiative and establish a policy at the Secretary of State's office requiring uh, political debates to invite all the balloted candidates. And I, one of my planks on my publicly noticed campaign website is uh, I would do that if I were Deborah Bowen or her successor. So it's a very simple fix. The default position should be all the balloted candidates are invited to public debates. And right now, legally, if nonprofits fail to do that, uh, they're in violation of their federal regulations. And if we had a legitimate IRS and government relationship, they would remove, the next step is they would remove their nonprofit status because nonprofits are prevented from being biased. They, they have to remain neutral and they have to use uh, objective criteria when selecting these candidates. So, so they could say, oh, we're only going to include the candidates who raised at least $100,000. They could do that. That's an objective criteria. But they usually fail to even say what criteria they use. This is Jan Arnold from Alameda County. Thank you for running and thank you for your excellent um, report back on the, um, you know, the points that you mentioned that would be, it seems to me, useful to a future candidate. You may not want to answer this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. I understand that there is a media committee rule that says that candidates cannot be spokespeople for the Green Party of California during the period when they're candidates. If you, um, if you want to answer this question, would, would you like to comment on whether, if it had been possible for you to be considered as an official Green Party of California spokesperson, during your candidacy, do you believe that would have been helpful in any way in terms of gathering more media attention? Or do you think it's not really important? Or, or you conduct the question? Thank you. Oh, no, I'd like, to, I'd like very much to answer that. Um, yeah, well, Nevada, the Nevada party um, already has addressed this issue. Um, we have a policy, or they have a policy in Nevada where uh, once some, Actually, they have a tradition. Once someone becomes a statewide uh, candidate, that person uh, excuses themselves from party um, leading uh, roles, which would include spokesmodel, um, uh, because there's a potential for conflict of interest. Um, if, if I'm a candidate, or if anyone's a candidate, and they're doing everything they can to get elected, they might do something that is in conflict with what the party would like to do. And, and so there's an inherent conflict of interest, potentially, in, a, in an active candidate also being a spokesperson for a party. There's an inherent, con there's a potential conflict of interest. Um, so, so Nevada has the tradition, uh, like when Craig Berglund ran for governor, he stepped down from the party leadership while he was an active candidate. The moment he ceased becoming an active candidate, he reverted to his party leadership role. 